Hello, and welcome to Culture Shock. I'm Evan, and this is Brent. Hello. What are we talking about today, Brent? Today we're talking about these things. They're called tanuki. Tanuki? Yes. What are these things here? So you see them a lot in Japanese culture and in anime. They seem to be like raccoons. They're often called raccoon dogs hmm. in translation. Um, and they're these sort of portly creatures that sort of waddle around and can change shape. Oh, um, shape to size or shape to... Shape to shape. I mean... They, oh, they, like a shapeshifter. They're, they're shapeshifters. So they can look like humans. Uh, they can look like other animals. You name it. Uh-huh. At least in folklore. Um, mm. Now, we see this and we see these animals and we think, really? What's going on here? This is an actual animal in Japan. Oh. Um, so th- th- that really, looks almost like a dog. It does. Very similar. And the reason it's translated raccoon dog is because they are... Um, um, genetically or, in terms, or physically, it's sort of halfway between a raccoon and a dog. They are their own species. Uh, they only exist in Japan, and they are unique to that country. Wow. Um, they, they fill a role similar to raccoons in other parts of the world. So they're scavengers. Uh, they kind of get into trash and things along those lines. Um, but they are this distinctive creature. Hmm. And over time, the Japanese people uh, created all sorts of myths and legends about uh, them and what they could do to the shape-shifting ability. So you see in uh, representations of Tanuki, they are these friendly animals. They can be mischi- um, uh, mischievous, but they generally use their powers for good, and they transform. But they transform very uniquely. Hmm. They transform using a particular part of their body. Oh? Um, the body's hanging down be- between their legs... The really big ones there, you kind of see at the bottom oh, of the thing. They have a huge cojones. They sure do, yes, yes. So, uh, they, <laughs> yes. So, traditionally, um, uh, they, they use exactly those, and you see even on the smaller one there, they're, they're rather prominent. Um, so, they, they, that is what they use to transform with. Yeah, it, it takes a little getting used to sometimes. Um, but uh, that is a transforming organ, if you will. I see these guys are, these tanuki are mm-hmm. carrying around uh, some sort of a, a, a water or I, I believe vessels. That's a, it's, it's a sake jug. Sake jug. Yes. Oh, yeah, they During like the they like sake. Exactly. <laughs> and they can carry around all sorts of things. So here's a whole bunch of tanuki on Whoa. display. Yeah. It's a tanuki jamboree. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and those happen too. Um, and you see that they'll, they'll hold different things depending on what the tanuki is there kind of to, as, as a luck charm. I see a soccer ball, I see coins, yeah. I see a scepter, or maybe it's a microphone. Not sure, yeah. Owls, Owls and, so probably and books wisdom. and all exactly. sorts of other things. Yeah, there's a little tanuki family yeah. down there for... Uh, wearing different hats, different yeah. style. Uh, now you do see they, they traditionally are shown wearing these straw hats, and so they, they, can, they can change shape and, and do things. They generally do it for good. Uh, they're kind of like... Ooh, what would be a good example in Western uh, mythology? Um, kind of like how pixies have been represented. So more beneficial, not malevolent. Exactly, yes. Um, possibly tricksters, but, but not too big of a deal. Now, you often see them uh, uh, in, in combination with these foxes. You see oh. them in the back there, uh, called kitsune. Kitsune. Yeah, and they are a species of fox uh, uh, common in Japan. Uh, but they also have transforming powers. Hmm. They just transform. They just shift shape. But they're much more mischievous and trick, and and they, they do a lot more tricks. Oh, yeah. uh, much less to be trusted than a tanuki. Hmm. And so you see, see that a lot. And I also see some cats there. So are these tanuki yeah. sort of a luck symbol? Because the yes. cats I know are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, since you'll see tanuki a lot uh, in front of restaurants and other yeah. other stores as a sort of a welcoming thing, much like the cats are. Um, but. Uh, there is somewhat less in the way there's very complicated stuff for the cat statues. Mm. Uh, different colors, different you know, movements, things like that Ooh. mean different things. Mm. Uh, tanuki are not quite that complicated, uh, but they can be good for different things depending on what they're holding in their hands. They do seem very friendly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and that is their role, is to be these kind of friendly um, helpers in, in life as opposed to a uh, trickster. Now, have we seen these in, in anime? In... We have, absolutely. Um, so uh, you see them, they, they are central to Pom Poco. Pom Poco. That is a Studio Ghibli film, uh, the same, uh, uh, same studio that Hayao Miyazaki is part of. Uh, and one of his best friends, Isao Takahara, did a film called Pom Poco. It's an environmentalist Ooh. tale 
uh, about a group of Tanuki living in a part of, of a forest that's about to be uh, raised for a development Ooh. in Tokyo. Um, ah. So they're, they're about to lose their homes to humans, uh -oh. and they decide to fight back. Ooh. Uh, and they fight back the best way they can with their shape-shifting powers. Huh. So it's a, it's a neat tale with lots of uh, them uh, using illusions uh, against humans and the ultimate result of all that. Wow. It's, it's a really neat film. And then there's also The Eccentric Family, the anime series from a couple of years ago as of this recording, so um, early 2000, uh, 2010s. And uh, it's a 13-episode anime series set in modern Kyoto, hmm. but with a Tanuki family. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, a, a, a group, family of Tanuki. Yeah, a group of Tanuki who spend most, most of their time in human garb, obviously, <laughs> to sort of survive in the city. But it's about how do you live in the modern world as a Tanuki or a Katsune? They show up. All these mm. mythical uh, creatures are in the show oh, as yeah. characters. How, how do you in the modern world with those kind yeah. of powers and... Exactly. Ooh. And the neat thing about the, the show is that it presents this kind of alternate world. <laughs> just, just in the shadows, just down that alleyway, there's, there's so, stuff going on that you don't know about. Uh, they also show, show up in video games. Video games? Yeah. What, what video games? So you may be familiar in Super Mario, they have the Tanuki suit that Mario can have. Oh, wow. Yeah, we have a little, little The Tanuki trail. suit. Yep. Oh, my goodness. That's exactly where it's well, from. Well, now, this, this sounds like it's, it's made its way to U.S. culture. How does... The U.S. deal with the uh, massive ma yes. male parts exactly. of these creatures. <laughs> <laughs> so that came out, came out in Pompoko uh, because that was released over here by Disney. I can't imagine Disney having a creature with a large yeah. set. Um, you know? so, so they went back to Studio Ghibli and, and, and they basically said, can we call them pouches? Pouches. Like kangaroo pouches. Oh, okay. That, that, that makes it um, more Disney-esque. Ghibli, Ghibli said, that's fine. You yeah, yeah, that. they're pouches. Uh, now, here's the other side of the coin. Stuff in them. <laughs> uh, Disney, by contract, could not change any of the animation or any of the, of the shots. So it's very clear what these pouches are yes, in the animation. <laughs> um, those pouches dangle low. Um, but that's what they're called in the animation. And again, it, it was a reasonable compromise to say, yeah. we don't want to say it outright in, in the dub, but if you look, it's there. I suppose um, that, that's one of those cultural differences. And if it's understood in cultural context, it's... Yeah. It's more under, you know, it's, it's, it's acceptable. And Studio Ghibli's point on, on that is they said, it's not important. Yeah, it's... Uh... You know, it, it's not central to the plot where that comes from. They just have these powers. So it's fine. You know, don't, don't worry about it. Too so so I, I, I could let my nieces and nephew watch this and... Yes. They, yeah. they'd, they'd you be might okay. want to watch it first. Just, just to, to make feel, sure. You know, if any questions come up, you'll know what they're asking about. <laughs> um, but yes, and, and the nice thing about the, about the movie is in general, it's, it's a very uh, family-friendly film. Ah, okay. Um, so, it, it, you know, there's violence, but it's folks getting bunked in the head with, you know, frying pans kind of stuff. So more more humorous sort of yes. um, comic. It, um, it is a little dark because it is an environmental tale mm. about people losing their homes. So basically. some good moral, hopefully. Absolutely. Um, and, and it is kind of sad in mm. that, you know, one of the themes is that a lot of these, these, these creatures are losing their homes and they deal a lot with other animals who've gone through this mm. and how they have to now live and how they have to survive. And one of their ideas is they don't want to live like that. Mm. So it, it's about things change. The struggle of man and environment and how that uh, mm -hmm. comes about. Yep, exactly. Wow. And if you've seen the anime film Whisper of the Heart, um, that film is actually set. And if you've seen, the, so Whisper of the Heart begins with a shot of a, um, a development in, in Tokyo. That is the last shot of Pompoko. So the films are connected. The, in that that interleaving the yes, two. exactly. Yeah. They, they, this where the heart was made kind of as a response to Pompoko in, in its own way. Wow. Yeah, so that's there. Um, and, that's a, and one other video game reference you may, refer, may recognize is in Animal Crossing, there's a character named Tom Nook hmm. and is basically Tanuki. Uh, looks very much like it has the same Nook. kind of power. Tom Nook. There we are. Tom Nookie. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so th there are a few references here and there, and you'll see them crop up. Uh, they're often more as sort of background things like this in street corners, things along mm. those lines. But that's what they're referring to, these Tanuki. Wow. So, you know, that, that, that makes me think, next time I'm watching an anime, mm -hmm. I'll be able to look through all the backgrounds and the, yeah. the shops and stores and... Hey, I know what that is, and yeah. that's a tanuki. Exactly. I'll be able to identify it. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us for Culture Shock and our episode on tanuki. Mm -hmm.
hopefully you'll be able to identify them in unusual places as well. Exactly, yeah. And if you want to know more about these or other topics, we have a website, geekarchaeologists.com. Join us there. I dig it. I dig it. <laughs>